Well, we are here today in central Iowa with Bob Manning of Manning Farms. Bob, thank you very much for taking time to speak with us today. We're gonna to talk about your farm. We wanna know some things you've done to be highly successful on your farm, and then we'd like to talk specifically about how you manage some of your corn hybrids uh, within the Stein lineup. When did you get started with farming? Oh, mid-90s. Did a little bit before that, but not a lot. Custom applied uh, fertilizer, ag lime, and sprayed chemicals did for that, farmers. Yeah, did that all prior yep. to starting farming, and quite a bit after we started farming. And I've talked to different farmers and different operations, and you definitely are one that I would call it super management of your corn. You know, you've, you've adopted a, a number of techniques to take the right corn hybrids and you put them in at higher populations. And so what we'd like to talk about here right now is just some of those specific items. To get high population, you have to have high, high fertility. The ground pH is very, very important. Ag lime, having the pH up there where it needs to be. I've learned the hard way that we can't raise corn without sulfur. Some of the practices that we have done with our sulfur is applying it closer to the, the crop year. One of our normal practices used to be put our phosphate potash on in the fall, right behind the combine, deep rip, everything's conventional tillage. We deep rip and try to get rid of our stocks the best we can. We have changed that up some, what to putting our sulfur in with our phosphate and potash. For instance, 150, uh, an application in a crop year would be 150 pounds of potash, 150 pounds of uh, phosphate, uh -huh. and 150 pounds of ammonia sulfate. And that's where we're getting our 35 to 40 pounds of sulfur. And it's right ahead of the planter. We'll apply that. We'll spray our pre-emerge herbicide. We'll, we'll work it and plant it. And I mean work it, just scratch it and plant. Within Stein, I mean, you found some hybrids that you like. In fact, that's one reason I think you use yeah. Stein products is specifically because of some of our hybrids that, yes. that, that work in that environment. One of them would be 9714-G uh, or the new MX514-20. Not familiar with the MX yet. Will be after this year. The 9714 though, it's a racehorse. Okay. And what that hybrid has, I call it vigor it will blow out of the ground. I mean, I don't care how cold it is. I get a little carried away sometimes and start planting a little early. Mm -hmm. You know, I might plant 5th of April, 10th of April. It's not really all that warm, but I have found that that's the first high. If I think it's a little cool yet, that's the hybrid I want to be planting early. You know, and it's a, it's a shorter plant height, um, stands well. Yep. And I'm assuming you've seen that in your farm. You, oh, yes. You don't have standability issues with it. Some competing companies are coming up with some hybrids, some shorter statured hybrids, similar to 9714. Do you think they're doing the right thing to do that? Yeah, I really do. I mean, this corn, you know, that's 12, 14 foot tall, and you know, and the ear is above my head, the, where the ear placement is. I, I want my corn to stand too. I want something shorter so the wind doesn't blow it down. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big part of that smaller corn. There are some growers that are scared to death of shorter corn because they talk about, they're afraid their ear placement will be too low. Have you ever had a case where you thought on 9714, your ear placement was, was too low and you couldn't harvest it? Not once. Our ground in our area and that, that we farm the 6,500 acres, we, we don't have a lot of rolling ground. You know, our, we're, we're pretty flat and we can, we can get our heads right down to the ground. How about traits in corn? You know, with our company, you use just at the most above ground trait technology. You yeah. don't use any below ground. You're corn on corn. So have you had rootworm pressure in the past that you know of? Not that I can see. Have we taken precautions to not have? Yes. And, 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 and what are those at, okay, at this point? Number one is get your ground black. We try to deep rip right behind the combine and give it as much time to make it as black as we can. Okay. Okay, and our, then our next is we put on our anhydrous with a chisel plow, John Deere 
chisel plow. So we're we're running deep and we're moving moving dirt again, trying to blacken it up. Any time that we make a, a second or a third pass, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we always put in insecticide to kill okay. the beetles. Okay. You know, up, you know, broadcast. You know, when we when we go back with our Roundup, we're we're doing it. When we spray our fungicide, it all goes on with the helicopter aerial. We always put in our fungicide, okay. in, insecticide with our fungicide. We always use an insecticide every chance we get. This is be my first year that I've gone away that in furrow insecticide uh, in the planter. This year, I'm, I'm gonna try it without it, but I, I'm scared. I'm scared of it, I don't know, because I've got neighbors that got, you know, rootworm problems, and they can do a lot of damage fast. Sure, yeah. But have we had any rootworm problems? Not that the agronomists are telling me. Been, and we scout for them a lot. Now on fungicide, one application, two applications, three applications, what, what have you done on fungicide in the past? That Always one. Fungicide is very, very important. We've tried none, and that does not work. <laughs> you know, we can show you to the row where the helicopter left a test strip. And I don't like test strips. I mean, it, I'm, I'm con convinced put, that it works. You have a sad every face acre, when you're in the combine. Yeah, with every test acre strip. that I plant, I want to. I want to spray fungicide. When is the best time to spray fungicide? My field is right there at uh, fully tasseled. Okay. And early fully tasseled. I mean, get right after it. When I start seeing tassels, I want to I want to know where the helicopter's at. And you have no fear on, you know, in some hybrids if you if you put fungicide on. Beer can deers uh, and yeah, yeah, no. You've, no, you've I, never had that issue. No, I have not. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'm a believer in two applications. Yep. From what I've seen with different people that are doing the high management corn. Yep. Now, if you're in, you know, if you're in a situation where you're not really pushing your corn, I guess I'm not sure if that's it's as big of a deal. But I definitely think on a farm like like yours, without a doubt, you have to do it. So, Bob, on your farm, um, what do you do for herbicides on, on weed control? Any, anything special? Well, yes, there is something special, and our our corn on corn allows us to do something special, you know, not use as much. Okay, <laughs> which, which is very special. Right, you know, you know, where your corn on corn, it, it isn't real tough, you know, and especially 20 inch rows to shade that out, you know, you don't have a lot of weed pressure. Yeah. After a couple years of corn, or even three years of corn, or our instance, 10 years of corn, and then we go to beans, we don't have no water hemp. Yeah. I mean, we, the only cool. water hemp we have is from the neighbors. We'll, we'll do a pre right ahead of the planter, fuel cultivated in very lightly. Mm -hmm. Then we'll come back, you know, with a Callisto product with a little bit of Roundup. And that's it for for uh, huh. herbicide. It's a and cheap you have clean, program. You have clean fields. And clean, clean fields. Now, how much are you contributing that to, you know, the corn on corn where you're shading it out? And that's another thing that I want to back up on you here. This is when we first started talking about how high the corn gets. Yep. I said, well, if you only got four foot high corn out there, what in the heck do you do to prevent weeds? They don't start when, they're, when the corn's, you know, three foot tall. They're started way down there. You've got shading effect, haven't you? Right. I mean, you have your canopy. There, there's people that think the only way you can get shaded, uh, shade the weeds out is have 12 foot tall corn. Oh. That's untrue. It's good for people to hear that because you, you've been using short statured corn now yes. for years yes. and you've had phenomenal success. You are showing everybody the future of corn production here on this Well, farm. the mindset and the chemical mindset that for on when it comes to herbicide, well, you can't cut rates. You gotta up the rate. Well, you don't. You can use less and, and, and do better. Be more efficient. There you go. A friend of mine from town came out here and he says, you know, years ago when I started planting 20 inch rows, he says, why are you, why are you doing that? Uh, I says, well, 
I'm trying to space my plants further apart. Well, he said, Jesus, Bob, that's just common sense. He says, you were planting 30 inch rows, now you're planting 20 inch rows. You're putting them closer together. You're not putting them further apart. <laughs> I says, well, you know, in the row. <laughs> that's right. You know, and Myron, I feel that that helps my standability. The height of corn, I think it's huge. You know, that ear that's sitting way up here on a stalk that's 12 foot tall, it's heavy. When the wind starts blowing and that ear's pulling that big tall stalk over, it's bound to, bound to go over. Have you had cases where you've had tall corn and you've had a wind event and the tall corn's blowing over and the short corn is not? Sure. There are people that are, that are pushing back on the shorter statured material, and we've had it for 10 years. Yep. Um, but now they're starting to see, especially when the derecho went through this part of Iowa, you know, the shorter stature, like the 9714 material sure. stood like a tree where a lot of other corn just yep. went completely flat. Another old racehorse is 9808. Don't leave 9808 out. No, no, there's, there's, there's diehard people that, that feel that's, okay. that's a I unmatchable hybrid. I didn't, in our conversation, I didn't want to sit here and say, oh, I wish I would have said something about 9808. It's a... Yeah, you, you use both 9714 uh, and 9808 on this farm, and I know yeah, both, they, and, and, and even 9808 is a shorter yeah. stature product, not right. as short as 9714. And 9714 is on my early variety, 9808 is towards my longer season uh, hybrid. Yeah, it, it, it works well and, and you, yes. can, you can push its populations. Yeah. And, and it'll stand and, forever. Yeah. If it's the last thing you go to pick, you, you, you leave your 9808 till last. Something I like that Stein does gets me my product early. Mm. Uh, we're sitting here right now and it's the 1st of April and my Stein corn has been in my seed shed for two months. It's a little thing that don't make a lot of difference to a lot of people, but it does to me. I like, I like having it here. I know what hybrids I'm gonna plant first, you know. Start in on my 9714, I know it's all one lot. Mm -hmm. When I start in on my 98, it's all one lot. It sure, all, it, sure. You don't have, well, we're gonna run over here and get you a box, and we're gonna run over here and get you three boxes, and we'll, we'll have it all to you by the time you're ready for it. I, I don't like that. Bob, thank you very much for taking the time to talk about the super management that you do on your Stein hybrids, on corn production here on your farm. And what you're doing here, you'll see a number of growers doing uh, in the future with the shorter statured, um, uh, higher, what, what we call super management corn hybrids. I don't know if everything's right, but I'm telling you the, the way we're doing it. And it, uh, it's, it's showing up in the yield side and I appreciate you coming and I don't, I don't mind sharing it with you. All right, Bob. Well, we've probably chatted enough about farming and growing corn. Now let's do something real fun. Let's go down to those cars and do something with them.